Hello, how are you doing econ students? Uh, this is 5 Minute Econ and today we're going to be talking about uh, protectionism. Protectionism, I hear you ask, what's that? Protectionism is um, government intervention using trade barriers to restrict imports. Okay, so that's the overall definition that you need to know and we're going to be talking about a few forms of that protectionism today and free trade and we're going to be using the example of the market for cars so have a look at this diagram really simple supply and demand um, that you know from microeconomics but the slight difference here is that we're going to add a small d after supply and a small d after demand that small d stands for domestic so these are all the domestic producers and customers in the market for cars. Now this first diagram, there's no world supply here. So this means that we have a, a situation called an embargo. Now an embargo is when you ban all imports. Now the good example for this in the market for cars is Cuba. So after the communist revolution, America banned uh, the export of American cars to Cuba. That's why now the most famous thing in Cuba, one of the most famous things, is the abundance of really old American cars. Because we know that Cuba doesn't produce many cars, so they're still using the same cars they imported previous to the communist revolution. Okay, so now let's open up the Cuban market to the world. Enter supply world. Now we label this with S world. Why is the line horizontal you ask? Um, the reason for that is if you think about it, the supply of uh, cars in the world market is perfectly elastic. That means that there are many, many, many manufacturers of cars around the world. It's American manufacturers, Korean manufacturers, British manufacturers, Japanese manufacturers. And if you open up the market, the world supply would be horizontal. Now, what, how does that affect the graph? So you can see here, The quantity demanded of cars will increase to Q2, we'll call it. Okay? But at the same time, the quantity supplied will decrease from QE to Q1. This means that you have a total number of cars imported into the country from Q1 to Q2. Now you may ask, well, what's the effect on different consumers and producers? Well, have a think about it. So, consumers here are getting a lot more cars for a lot lower price, okay? But at the same time, the producers are not very happy, obviously, because the quantity supplied will decrease and the amount of money they can charge for cars has also decreased. So, in many countries you have an argument, well, what do you do about this situation? We want to protect jobs in our economy. If we produce a lot of cars, we want to protect those industries. So often there's a lot of pressure on governments to introduce what's called tariffs. Now, tariffs are a tax on imports and it's very, very common. I mean, you hear uh, like President Donald Trump um, calling for tariffs on steel, aluminum foil, um, etc, etc. And where I live now, Japan has um, extensive tariffs on many, many goods. And you can check that in your own country. There's many um, statistics and government websites showing 
you wherever the tariffs are. Um, so we'll add the tariff onto this diagram. Really easy. S world plus tariff. Okay. So you can start to see the effects of a tariff on the car market. So what's happened here is that obviously by introducing the tariff, you have increased the price. So the, with the increase in price, the quantity demanded has shifted to Q3, okay? Um, so consumers are losing out this area here. So this area is a dead weight loss for consumers. On the other side, <coughs> you'll notice with the increase in price of the um, imported cars, the producers have started producing more. Okay, so this is this is what um, the car manufacturers want, say in America. They want to be protected and they want to increase their own supply. Okay, so there are a number of uh, issues with that, obviously. Uh, it depends on the goods you're putting a tariff on as well. So um, if you look up for your IAs coming up in the future, you'll find a lot of goods um, that have tariffs on them will be what's called intermediate goods. Okay, and intermediate goods are goods that are used to make another goods. So when you see, uh, there's many, many articles on uh, the tariff on steel products these days. When you go to analyze that, you've got to think, well, what's steel used for? You may be protecting American jobs from foreign imports, but you're also damaging other industries because that steel, if you increase the price, will also lead to an increase in price in the goods that steel is used for. For example, cars. So when you hear politicians say, uh, we need to protect steel workers, what they're not thinking about is that if the price of steel increases significantly, you will also damage other sectors, such as the car, se the car industry and the housing industry. That will put pressure on prices and lead to um, further dead weight loss. Okay, so that was a quick explanation of uh, protectionism, free trade, embargoes, and tariffs. Hopefully the diagram is okay. Um, if you just remember where all the cues go and where the supply world tariff goes, and remember all of the labels, then you should be good to go. Okay, well thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>